Recently, the Fujin ship, carrying a full-size model of the Air Alert, 600 early warning aircraft, and the J-35 carrier-based fighter jet, left the waters of Chongqing Island Wharf and traveled north to begin its fifth sea trial before entering service. The Fujian ship is expected to enter service in 2025 as it tests its power plant, electrical system, electromagnetic catapults, and electronic equipment, making it the only country in the world to have a catapult-type aircraft carrier. The appearance of Fujian ship also marks the strength of China's aircraft carrier fleet has ranked second in the world. The United Kingdom, India, France, and other streams have been left behind by China. China's next goal to catch up with the world's first navy is the United States and want to catch up with the U.S. Navy, must have more powerful than the United States aircraft carrier fleet. Fujian ship performance is very advanced, but after all, just a displacement of more than 80,000 tons of conventional power carrier, with the Belt and Road initiative blossomed all over the world. China's investment projects overseas more and more. The Chinese Navy cannot be satisfied with just the Chinese Navy cannot just be satisfied with guarding the doorstep, must have the ability to protect China's overseas interests, which means that China needs to have a strong, ocean-going navy. Nuclear-powered aircraft carriers are indispensable. At present, the world's aircraft carriers from the takeoff mode to distinguish, mainly divided into catapult carriers and skidding aircraft carriers, from the power system is divided into conventional power carriers and nuclear-powered aircraft carriers. At present, only the United States and France are equipped with nuclear-powered aircraft carriers, and the aircraft carriers of other countries are all conventionally powered aircraft carriers. Conventional power carriers have some advantages over nuclear power carriers, such as low cost, low maintenance costs, and do not need to carry out medium-term nuclear reactor overhaul and material replacement. A nuclear-powered aircraft carrier for medium-sized nuclear reactor overhaul and replacement often need three to five years if a country has only one or two nuclear-powered aircraft carriers, it will be very easy to appear a long period of carrier window. Spend a huge amount of money to build nuclear-powered aircraft carriers cannot be put into combat in a long time. Therefore, in the case of a limited number of aircraft carriers, the general country will choose conventional power carriers. The United States currently has 11 nuclear-powered aircraft carriers. But by the nuclear-powered aircraft carriers need to queue up for maintenance and material replacement and other reasons resulting in the U.S. Navy, usually only about six to eight nuclear-powered aircraft carriers can be put into combat. But if you want to compare the oceanic sustained combat capability and long-range attack capability, that conventional power carriers how cannot catch up with nuclear-powered aircraft carriers. In addition, nuclear-powered aircraft carriers do not need to carry their own fuel, which greatly saves space on the hull, and can carry additional aviation fuel or ammunition which greatly improves the sustained combat capability of the entire carrier. When China's aircraft carrier construction was in its infancy, choosing a conventionally powered carrier not only reduces technical risks, but also helps to ensure the number of available carriers, which is an extremely pragmatic choice. However, as the number of available carriers grows and the scale of China's overseas investment grows, it is inevitable that China will develop nuclear-powered carriers. If only rely on conventional aircraft carriers to maintain the interests of China's doorstep is enough. But if in the ocean encountered the challenge of the United States nuclear-powered carrier fleet, then the conventional power carrier sustained combat capability is insufficient to the problem is completely exposed. History, there have been a number of times when conventional power carriers ran out of fuel at critical moments and affected the war situation. For example, at the end of 1942, the outbreak of the East Solomon Sea battle, the U.S. Army Hornet carrier, because of the need for refueling and quit the battlefield, resulting in the U.S. Army can only enterprise Saratoga II carriers to deal with the Japanese three carriers. Therefore, after the Fujin ship is commissioned, the probability is that China will use nuclear power from the fourth carrier. However, the reactors required for nuclear-powered carriers are a relatively weak item for China compared to its current mature conventional power systems. Although China has been able to build reactors for nuclear submarines since the 1970s, the reactors for nuclear submarines cannot be directly transferred to nuclear-powered carriers. For example, France's Charles de Gaulle aircraft carrier directly used two sets of nuclear submarine K-15 reactors, the total shaft power of only 80,000 horsepower 
resulting in full load displacement of 40,000 tons of Charles de Gaulle aircraft carrier, the maximum speed of only 27 knots. The U.S. Enterprise was also directly adopted a two W nuclear submarine reactors in order to ensure that the total shaft power, a breath equipped with eight units, occupying a large amount of space on the ship, the failure rate is also relatively high. Later, the United States chose to improve on the basis of nuclear submarine reactors, developed a high-power nuclear reactor suitable for nuclear-powered aircraft carriers. Ford carries two A-1B reactors. The total output power is as high as 500,000 horsepower, so that the full load displacement of more than 100,000 tons of Ford, the maximum speed of up to 30 knots. Therefore, China's nuclear-powered aircraft carriers cannot directly use the reactors on nuclear submarines, but must develop a reactor specifically for nuclear-powered aircraft carriers. However, if we continue to use the nuclear submarine reactors to make improvements in a step-by-step -step manner, we will be in a situation where China will have to catch up with the United States for a long time. After all, the U.S. has been researching reactors for nuclear-powered aircraft carriers since the 1960s, and this kind of technological heritage is not something that China can catch up with in a short period of time. However, China is best at bending the road to overtake. In terms of shipboard catapults, China directly skipped the steam catapults, the use of more advanced electromagnetic catapults, so that the United States of America's decades of technological advantage of the steam catapults lost its significance. And in terms of nuclear-powered aircraft carrier reactors, China is also likely to abandon the traditional uranium fuel in favor of thorium elements, leading the United States in technology. On November 19th, the U.S. media reported that China is developing a prototype land-based nuclear reactor in the town of Muching in Sichuan province, and also uses thorium-based molten salt reactor technology. The future of China's aircraft carriers, the probability of the use of fourth-generation thorium-based molten salt reactors with medium voltage DC, coupled with all electric propulsion, so that China's nuclear-powered aircraft carriers technologically ahead of the U.S. four-class aircraft. Carriers. The principle of thorium-based molten salt reactors is the same as that of uranium reactors, which utilize the technology of heavy nuclear fission to release enormous energy from atomic nuclei and then heat the medium. The difference is that the thorium-based molten salt reactor is a mixture of nuclear fuel and molten salt at high temperatures to form a flow of liquid fuel. Fission produced by high-temperature molten salt flow while fission, high-temperature molten salt flow through the steam boiler, will be taken away from the heat to form steam to promote the work of steam turbines. Compared with traditional nuclear reactors, thorium-based molten salt reactors produce less nuclear waste, have no risk of core meltdown, and do not require the consumption of large amounts of water as a moderator. Internationally, thorium-based molten salt reactors are classified as fourth-generation nuclear reactors. However, Thorium-based molten salt reactors also have some technical difficulties, such as the high corrosiveness of molten salt, which can easily damage the core protection shell. This led to the United States later abandoned the thorium-based molten salt reactor. China, on the other hand, has been researching thorium-based molten salt reactors since the 1970s, and it was not until the last few years that the Shanghai Institute of Applied Physics of the Chinese Academy of Sciences solved the technical difficulties related to molten salt reactors. And in 2023, the two MWT liquid-fueled thorium-based molten salt experimental reactor formally gained the certification through the National Nuclear Safety Administration, NNSA, of China. In 2024, Jiangnan Shipyard started the construction of 240,000-ton thorium-based molten salt reactor container ship, indicating that the thorium-based nuclear reactor has made a breakthrough in miniaturization, safety, and practicability, and is likely to be equipped with aircraft carriers in the future. On June 21st of this year, China released a public tender notice for the 2MWT liquid fuel thorium-based molten salt experimental reactor with commissioning and operation and maintenance technical service project. Gansu Wuwei 2 megawatts of thorium-based molten salt reactor has also begun trial operation. All signs indicate that China's thorium-based molten salt reactor has begun to be practical. As with the electromagnetic catapult, China and the nuclear reactor has also realized the bend in the road to overtake. Of course, 
The United States continues to use uranium reactors as the power source of nuclear-powered aircraft carriers is also a reason. Not the United States is really completely unable to overcome the thorium-based nuclear reactor technology. Thorium-based molten salt nuclear reactors need to operate at high temperatures and strong corrosive fluoride salt environment. The durability of the protective shell has extremely high requirements, although China has solved the relevant problems. But the United States of America's uranium reactor technology is more mature. The Nimitz-class uranium reactor overhaul cycle of 25 years. The Ford class for 50 years and the current thorium-based molten salt nuclear reactor in order to ensure that. All is well. The overhaul cycle may be only 15 years. Therefore, nuclear-powered carriers with thorium-based molten salt reactors have lower maintenance costs and overhaul intervals than U.S. carriers with uranium reactors. The U.S. Nimitz-class carriers may only need one overhaul of their reactors during their entire service cycle while nuclear-powered carriers using thorium-based molten salt reactors may need three overhauls of their reactors during their entire service cycle. However, thorium-based molten salt reactors are still in their infancy, and their reliability and safety will continue to improve, while their environmental friendliness and economy are significantly better than that of uranium reactors, making them the best choice for China's nuclear-powered aircraft carriers. Moreover, the adoption of thorium-based molten salt reactor has another advantage for China. That is, China's thorium reserves are extremely rich. The proven reserves of more than 300,000 tons, which is more than three times of the uranium reserves, more than 300,000 tons of thorium, enough for China to use for 20,000 years. And considering the longer service window for nuclear-powered aircraft carriers, China must build a sufficient number of nuclear-powered aircraft carriers to ensure that there are multiple nuclear-powered aircraft carriers available at all times. U.S. media believe that China's nuclear-powered aircraft carriers are estimated to come out between the 15th five-year plan and the 16th five-year plan, that is, around 2030, when China will build at least four nuclear-powered aircraft carriers using thorium-based molten salt reactors to ensure that at any time, there will be two nuclear-powered aircraft carriers capable of carrying out missions. Carriers will be able to carry out their missions at any time. As China does not seek world domination, but only needs to safeguard its own interests in the relevant regions, there is no need for China's aircraft carriers to be deployed globally. Therefore, it is unlikely that China will have more nuclear-powered aircraft carriers than the United States in the future. After all, an aircraft carrier is a money-gobbling beast, and an additional carrier will cost hundreds of millions of dollars per year to maintain combat effectiveness. The total number of Chinese aircraft carriers in the future will be about three to four conventionally powered carriers with four to six nuclear-powered carriers, and China may build a large number of Type 076 quasi-aircraft carriers to replace the nuclear-powered carriers in carrying out some low-intensity military missions.